the concept of perceptual frame uh, was, were uh, uh, published by Efron in 1970. And a perceptual frame is any two events that are perceived. If they are perceived and they happen within 75 to 100 milliseconds of each other, your brain lumps them together as happening at the same time. They're perceived as happening at the same moment in time, not like one happened and then the other and they're in the same category, but literally they're perceived as happening instantaneously at the same time. Um, we had a really interesting demonstration of this subjectively. Um, random dots of light are projected to the screen at, at random times. It's a random number generator for XY uh, uh, plot and by time. And so these little dots are happening randomly. And it, it, you can tell these are random dots. You know, there isn't any, you know, pulsing, you know, happening. It's just a bunch of random dots. Well, they still continue to be random, but you turn on some music. What happens? Suddenly, all of these dots are pulsing to the music. No, they're not. Your brain is knitting them together into the same perceptual frames and they're syncing the music and the lights and things into a meaningful relationship that never existed. Um, perceptual frame uh, temporally is very similar to the 100 millisecond alpha frequency, but it's also present in microstates. What's a microstate? Well, Dietrich Lehmann is Roberto Pascal Marquis' boss at the Key Institute for Mind Brain Studies in Zurich. Um, he and his wife Martha are psychiatrists and they've invented almost all the psychoactive drugs to come out of Switzerland since the 50s. Um, these are very important people, very bright uh, folks. And uh, he um, came up with a millisecond resolution view of how the brain is working the brain has a pattern that's held in a semi-stable state for about 80 plus milliseconds and then it dissolves and reforms into another semi-stable state. And these micro states are like little notes that you can play on a piano. You have a, only a little repertoire, only a few notes that you can play, but you play between these notes in a standard sort of a little tune that your brain, brain will play. You know. Uh, just a little guitar riff that your brain is playing again and again and again. Well, that's your tune. Schizophrenics don't play the same tune. Um, so this is a very important way of looking at things. But it, all of these things happen all in about the 100 millisecond range. These are all related to perceptual snapshots and process time frames within the brain. The ERP earliest components also happen in the same basic time frame. 60 to uh, 80 milliseconds is the arrival and the thalamus of the stimulus. And at about 100 milliseconds, it hits you in the back of the head, in the visual cortex, or your primary sensory area. So all of these sensory relays are, are uh, happening, and they, they're also happening in this 100 millisecond time frame. All of these things are timed in this way because of how your brain needs to have them timed to make things work together. So literally, you're knitting together your perceptual snapshots um, and blending them together into the continuous stream of consciousness that we perceive. But they're happening in discrete packets. Your brain is processing things in batch mode. Little packet of information, process the little bugger. Another little packet of information, process that little bugger. So one after another, these little snapshots are being taken and processed in the brain as a little chunk of information. At about 200 milliseconds, instead of the arrival of the sensory information at the back of your head is sensory detection. Okay, When it hits you in the front of the head, at about 200 milliseconds, it's now awareness. You weren't even aware that you perceived that at 100 milliseconds. It takes you to the 200 millisecond point before you even know you just perceived something. So it takes one chunk to process it in as a perception, and by the time the next chunk is coming in as a perception, you're now aware of the last chunk. Does 
So these are being processed through in a, again a batch mode. And at this point in time, at about 200 milliseconds, when awareness happens, there's a big burst of, uh, of uh, 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 linkage um, here, and there's projections between the frontal and the parietal areas that happen, again, at about this point in time, 130 to 280 milliseconds. Phase locking of gamma happens when these uh, occur also. At, at the 180 to 230 millisecond point, this 200 millisecond time when it arrives up front, gamma will occur as a burst. Gamma occurs in these little burst packets that are nested within slower rhythms. Gamma will nest within theta, which will nest within slow cortical potentials. We'll show you that in a little bit. So at this 200 millisecond point, we got phase lock gamma uh, at about 200 milliseconds again. The P300 has two components, one just after the 200 millisecond point frontally, that's the P3A, the P3B is at about 300 milliseconds at the back of the head, which is the, the P300 that we showed you, or the P3 that, that we showed you um, uh, um, on the uh, uh, person who couldn't read um, uh, and comprehend the, the big red dot at the back of the head. Again, that's the P300. But this big burst of gamma uh, happens at about the 300 millisecond point, but it's only after a target stimulus. You can receive lots of inputs, but until it's a relevant input, this gamma won't happen. So you're getting a series of stimuli, stimuli and literally at the P300, you're now able to distinguish one stimulus from another. So perception is 100 milliseconds, awareness is at 200 milliseconds. At 300 milliseconds, you now can differentiate the perception one from another. Is the stimulus A or stimulus B? You can't tell until the 300 millisecond point when your brain makes this comparison. And then at 400 milliseconds and 450 milliseconds, um, the uh, later uh, potentials happen. At 400 milliseconds, your BS detector goes off or not, and the information is encoded 50 milliseconds later. You got this little window of opportunity to tell yourself it was BS, about 50 milliseconds. If you don't tell it's BS by then, it's encoded as fact. So, so th these late event potentials are really very predictive of coma outcome. If you find these late potentials present in the brain, they're highly probable to recover from coma. Highly probable. It augurs well for their outcome. If they're absent, it doesn't mean a thing. But if they're present, it's very positive. I mean, if, if, if you're using an auditory input and they can't tell the difference between the stimuli, um, it doesn't mean anything. It could be a blockage of the ear canal or they could be deaf somehow. I mean, you, you really can't tell for sure about the absence. But the presence of them is very positive. Now, the event-related potential can be perceived as one cycle in the construction of a frame of consciousness. But it's only one cycle. 